Welcome to the second of our series of TCP Replay demo demonstration recordings. This time what we're going to do is try to make TCP Replay run a lot faster. We're going to do that by downloading some code from Luigi Rizzo's uh, website. This is the NetMap drivers. What this will do is actually modify the system and allow the application to access the network buffers directly. So that bypasses most of the kernel and greatly increases the speed that an application can run at. It will take down the interface that you are working with, but uh, as long as you're telneted in on a different interface, I'm coming in on a, a giggy interface, I should be able to get at high performance on my 10 giggy interface. So I have the code uh, downloaded. I'll extract it. And because this is a Linux operating system, I'll go into the Linux operating system folder and I'll just run make. Now what happens is that the drivers are copied over. Once again, you're going to have to have source code installed uh, for the system to work. Uh, and um, uh, it's copying all the code over, patching it so that it will work with the new NetMap drivers. So you can see it's actually created some NetMap drivers, but it's also created uh, some Intel E1000E drivers, some uh, uh, 10 gig E drivers as well, as we can see here, some Intel server drivers. And uh, also, uh, you'll find that it uh, has uh, uh, built a few other types of interfaces uh, and, and modules. So uh, here the modules are all created and um, normally you would have to go through some procedures to install it. I'm going to do some shortcuts here and I'm going to copy in a script that I've created. And let's have a look at this script. So my 10 gig E interfaces are E6 and E7. Once again I'm connected in through ETH4, so this is going to be safe because uh, these network drivers are going to be a little bit more intrusive than your regular network drivers. Without any applications running, the drivers will run normally, but what we'll do is we'll take down some interfaces, unload some uh, existing drivers, uh, may or may not exist, and then install uh, the NetMap driver, which is a prereq to the IXGPE driver, which is a 10 gig E driver, then it brings the interfaces back up. This saves me a lot of problems in trying to copy these files in the right location in the kernel, uh, setting up all the dependencies, uh, loading my RAM disk and everything else, and uh, rebooting my system. So let's go execute that. Of course, I must be in pseudo mode. And I'll list my modules. Uh, everything went okay. We'll find that the IGB driver is uh, dependent on the NetMap driver. So everything should be installed. Now if I run a test, if we recall the old one, we're going to add an extra option in here. Now when this starts, first it has to switch the driver over to NetMap mode. So it's bypassing the drivers and now a single application go, can go and access the system directly. So this makes it almost like a hardware uh, system. Now we are now getting 9.5 uh, gigabits per second and a much higher flow rate uh, using the same options as we had before. And if we do some of the calculations as to what the overhead of these files are, because this PCAP file, the average packet size is only about 445 uh, bytes each. Uh, if we do some of the calculations, we're getting about 98% uh, of the entire network flow. On other devices, uh, it's been known to go even higher, and um, 
uh, you'll see us tuning this even more to uh, get this to full wire rate. But you can consider this to be very close to full wire rate. You can find that the limitation is uh, for flows per second is really at what rate you can uh, send at because this PCAT file, if we wanted to go to higher flows per second, we would have to go with a file that has uh, an average smaller packet size within it.